We discovered Randall Carlson through a Joe Rogan podcast. It was Joe Rogan, Graham Hancock, and Randall Carlson. They had like a three hour podcast that literally will change the way you think about human history. Education is, is my passion, it's like my life's work. And in order to really properly understand who you are as a human being, you have to know the history of who we are as human beings, right? Like, where did we come from? How did we get to this point? What major Earth events have affected the way that we develop? I saw that Randall Carlson was doing a four-day event from Flagstaff, Arizona up to Moab. It was a no-brainer to us. So we're gonna be tent camping again. Let's go check on Angel. Let's, let's, see, let's see if she needs any help. Definitely excited to give this bad boy a go. We are all packed up. Might look like chaos back in here, but it's organized chaos. We know where things are. Uh, we've got a first aid kit here. Of course, you gotta have your adventure hat of hiking boots, my waterproof backpack, got all my chargers, solar panels back in there as well. So we got the Yeti, easy access right here. We'll be able to flip this open when we need food. Uh, we've got our water back here three 10-hour days of driving to get there in time. Just before we left today, I was able to harvest a handful of spinach. A little stack is for you. Mm, thank you. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Well, when we get back, we should have beans. I planted watermelons throughout here. Some sunflowers, cucumbers, tomatoes all in the back there. Let's get it. Wow, those are really good. Let's go to Arizona. How you like Kansas so far, Angel? Beautiful. Okay, I'm doing the hard job of filming here, so just in case you were wondering. All right, settle down. Just flatten it down, get the air out. Yes. We just got to Wichita. We're about to hit this place called Songbird Juice Co. You seen anything good? Yeah, those acai bowls look amazing. <laughs> She's got that look on her eye like she just needs an acai bowl. When Angel gets hangry, Watch out. You gotta watch out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We made it to the great state of Texas. Yee! Yee, baby! America. some cacao. I've got the machine hooked up to this outlet back here behind the gas can. camp, cook up some food, and then tomorrow morning, 8.15, is when we meet Randall Carlson. We meet the whole squad that's gonna be with us over the next four days. A lot of this trip is completely a surprise for both Angel and I. We've never experienced the canyon lands before. You know, to be able to witness it with Randall, whew, it's a huge blessing. After packing up camp, Angel and I went into town to meet Randall for the first time, and the entire team that was about to be with us for the next four days. We loaded up into our caravans and set off on a life-changing adventure. There's a couple of natural bridges and rock arches uh -huh. that were probably created in less than a week. They were created by catastrophic flows. So what I was looking at in the, in the arches and natural bridges here around this area is, is there any conceivable way that slow processes could create them but what we actually see is slow processes are destroying them slowly. 
not created. You can't go somewhere and say, look, here is a, a, a natural bridge being formed. My theory is, is that you have these periods where the planet shifts from full glacial age to interglacial age. The Younger Dryas, this was a 1300 year period that ended the last ice age. And there were, that's when these huge floods took place. So during those periods of time, what I think is that there is periods of massively accelerated erosion. If you look at the, the buttes and mesas there, the tops of those was the former land surface. And you can look in their strata here in this one, and then it'll match the strata over here. But all the intervening rock has been removed. 18 to 24 transitions like that in the last two and a half million years. Inner lower gorge, and I would think that. So I think that the erosion of rock has taken place over more like episodes where it's really accelerated and concentrated. Then the planet settles into a new climatic regime, things kind of stabilize, and then it's slow erosion takes over. What that does is it shows us that the history of this planet is really dynamic. And the other thing is where it tends to get controversial is when you start proposing that some of these vastly accelerated events have happened in recent geological times, not millions of years ago, but thousands of years ago. So when you start proposing the, the tempo of these kinds of events, that seems to be a lot quicker. Don't lose the sense of wonder about this whole miracle that's unfolding, that's life on this planet and where it's going. And you know, where do we fit in? Do, is there something that we're here to do? Some, some you know, goal within the natural order that we humans are supposed to somehow fulfill? And I tend to think that maybe there is. And maybe what it turns out to be is that we're the guardians of this planet because we're the only species that can. At this point, you know, if, if something is out there that could devastate the ecosystem of the entire planet, and we know it, and we know that it's within our technological grasp to not allow that to happen, do we allow it to happen or do we intervene? Literally every month, something is flying by in near Earth space. Sometimes only enough to cause a minor catastrophe, but other times a global catastrophe. Now, if we discover that there's something that has targeting Earth, do we intervene? Is it our moral duty to intervene? Or do we just sit passively by and know what's gonna happen and say, oh, well, it's the will of God, or it's the natural order, or do we intervene? What is the correct moral choice in a situation like that? If we don't intervene, there's the potential of billions of deaths, vast ecosystem destruction on a scale we could barely even imagine. I don't know, I come down on the side that, yeah, maybe we should intervene. Last night, that was an amazing conversation by the fire. Angel and I are cooking a little bit of breakfast. We're here in Mexican hat. Angel's cooking up some vegan eggs. I got some real eggs. Whose looks better? <laughs> Actually, don't answer that. You may remember our friends Cam and L. We originally planted the first redwood trees with them, actually, up north in California. Cam was talking about getting his own truck. He did get his own truck and he got an Airstream. This is my first time checking this out. This is so sick. I'm so happy for him. Cam's Ram, baby! <laughs> Dude, look at this! Nice to see you, bro. Look at this beast! Medieval maps of the Holy Land. The secret legacy of Jesus. Ooh, there we go. Alright, so where are we off to? Do you guys have any plans? Oh, yeah, you guys are talking about going north a little bit. We can. Yeah. Yeah, there's Valley of the Gods. I'm down, um, I'm down with that because we're going north anyways. Yeah.
came back to the Valley of the Gods and we found this really epic camping spot right under this big old penis rock. Cam's got that vintage 1950s Airstream looking good. Oh my God, look at this. So we got a nice little fire pit here. real quick. Thank you. Flush. <laughs> what a view. That is just a great view.